Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The appalling afterlife of a dowager queen, Catherine Parr. Catherine Parr today is known as the sixth and final wife to King Henry VIII. She lived a turbulent life and was married a total of four times. Catherine is noted for her advances for women and is even thought to have been a very early feminist. But what we want to focus on today is the appalling afterlife that the once Queen Consort of England suffered. Join us today as we delve into the shocking events that followed in the many years to follow her death. On the 30th of August 1548, Catherine Parr gave birth to a daughter and her first child at Sudley Castle. The child was named Mary, after Catherine's close friend and stepdaughter Mary, the later Queen Mary I of England. Together, Catherine and her fourth husband, Thomas Seymour, welcomed the healthy baby girl into their lives. Interestingly, although Catherine and Mary I were polar opposites in terms of religion, they were extremely close. It's sad to note that Elizabeth, later Elizabeth I, was not present for what came next. Although she resided at the castle with Catherine, the reason for her absence is rather unsettling. The feverish Catherine was overheard speaking to Thomas Seymour about a very serious matter. It's believed that Seymour had sexually harassed, if not actually molested, Elizabeth on multiple occasions. But unfortunately, Catherine sided with the man she desperately loved and with whose child she was heavily pregnant. Elizabeth was sent away from Sudley Castle in disgrace, as if Seymour's faults were her own. Now, it was only six months before Catherine and Thomas married that the King of England died. And as it so often did for women of the Tudor era, what began with joy and hope ended in a slow and painful death. Baby Mary Seymour was just one week old when Catherine died of presumed postnatal complications and sepsis. After her death, her daughter was placed into the household of her close friend, Catherine Willoughby, the Dowager Duchess of Suffolk. Now after her death, Catherine lay in repose at Sudley, only for a short while before her body was wrapped in sear and then placed in a lead coffin. Into the soft lead was impressed, KP, heareth life Queen Catherine, wife to King Henry VIII, and the wife of Thomas, Lord of Sudley, High Adby, and England, and Yunkle to King Edward VI. Lady Jane Grey was the chief mourner at the funeral, which is believed to be the first Protestant service of its kind in England, and afterwards the Queen was buried within the chapel, and it was here that she lay, untouched for over 200 years. But above the ground, the church and its estates were falling into ruin, and one man's morbid curiosity then disturbed the resting place of the once Queen Consort. In the summer of the year 1782, Mr John Lucas, who had occupied the land of Lord Rivers, whereon the ruins of the chapel stood, had the curiosity to rip off the top of the coffin, expecting to discover within it only the bones of the Queen, but to his great surprise found the whole body wrapped in six or seven sere cloths of linen, entire and uncorrupted, although it had lain there upwards of 230 years. His unwarrantable curiosity led him also to make an incision through the sear cloth, which covered one of the arms of the corpse, the flesh of which at the time was white and moist. I was very much displeased at the forwardness of Lucas, who had his own hand opened the coffin. It would have been quite sufficient to have found it and then have made a report of it to Lord Rivers or myself. This account continued. In the summer of the year following 1783, his lordship's business made it necessary for me and my son to be at Sudley Castle, and on being told what had been done the year before by Lucas, I directed the earth to the once more removed to satisfy my own curiosity, and I found Lucas's account of the coffin and corpse to be just as he had represented them, with the difference that the body was then grown quite fetid, and the flesh where the incision had been made was brown and in a state of putrefaction, in consequence of the air having been let upon it. The stench of the corpse made my son quite sick, Whilst he copied the inscription which is on the lead of the coffin, he went through it, however, with great exactness, 
I afterwards decided that a stone slab should be placed over the grave to prevent any further and improper inspection. It is believed that the hair clippings, a tooth and a swatch of fabric from the sleeve of Catherine's bridal dress were taken at this point. Sadly, this was not the last time that poor Catherine would be disturbed, as in 1792 Catherine's coffin was dug up by a group of drunks and then reburied upside down. It was 25 years until Lord Chandos, the owner of Sudley, decided to move Catherine to a safer tomb and the exhumation was done by Reverend John Lates. Lates had completed repairs at the chapel, and on the 18th of July 1817, the following notes were made by Edmund T. Brown. After considerable search, the coffin was found bottom upwards in a walled grave where it had been deposited. It was then removed to the Chandos vault, and we proceeded to examine the body, but the coffin having been so frequently opened, we found nothing there but a bare skeleton, except a few pieces of cerecloth, which was still under the skull, and a dark coloured mass which proved to contain, when washed, a small quantity of hair, which exactly corresponded with some I already had. The roots of the ivy, which you may remember grew in such profusion on the walls of the chapel, had penetrated into the coffin, and completely filled the greater part of it. We then had the different pieces of lead, which from time to time had been cut from the coffin, firmly nailed together so as to present the original form of the coffin, and it was placed on two large flat stones by the side of the former Lord Chantos. Dr Nash said, The Queen must have been low of stature, as the lead was enclosed, her corpse was but five feet four inches in length. You see, a height of around five foot four was considered middling for a woman of the 1500s, and accords well with a woman who, when live, was neither described as tall or small. Brown concluded, the ancient chapel which had been desecrated by the Puritan was thoroughly renovated under the direction of Sir John Gilbert Scott, and a handsome decorated altar tomb, surmounted by a gothic canopy, was erected on the north side of the Sacrarium to the memory of Queen Catherine Parr, whose effigy was rendered as correctly as it could be from the portraits which are extant. It was 216 years after her death that Catherine Parr, safely under her alabaster image, was finally able to enter into a restful eternity. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.